rarity, a little bit of men's individual pursuit in Callum. Yeah, this is this is definitely one of the events I'd like to see back in the Olympic schedule. Um, that and the kilo, of course, uh, still wearing my splinters hat or helmet, as you wish to call it. Um, but I think an individual pursuit is 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 really one of the top events in track cycling. So it's great to see it still uh, have its uh, place at the European Championships. It really is a very exciting event, and when you try and explain to people that it's just two people either side of the track racing against each other, it doesn't really uh, doesn't really get the excitement. But this uh, started this morning, this qualification at uh, 20 past 12 earlier on today. And uh, Jonathan Milan from uh, Italy, funnily enough, with a 4.05.750, a blisteringly fast time. Uh, Lev Gonov from Russia in second place, some three seconds down. Claudio Imhoff from Switzerland qualified third, uh, 3.48 seconds down. And then Benjamin Thomas, believe it or not, comes in in fourth place. So uh, the points race champion from last night gets back up today and produces a very quick time. And Callum, like you know, most of the pursuit times, or like most of any of the times in recent years, this time the time for this event has just gone ballistic. It, it has, and uh, <laughs> I guess as someone who's out the sport now, it becomes it becomes a little bit depressing because I can't tell the young ones my PB anymore and feel like I've got something to be proud of. Um, but uh, the, the times here at this track especially are going to be uh, something special. We're looking at uh, an altitude of uh, 1,500 feet. It means the air is a little bit thinner. There's less aerodynamic drag for the riders to deal with. Um, so we should be on for some pretty incredible times this evening as well. So Benjamin Thomas in the home straight. Rider from Switzerland in the back straight. 16 laps of the velodrome to see who's going to take the bronze medal in the men's individual pursuit title. So both riders in their bikes nice and early, hence the slight delay for the beeps to start the 10 second countdown. And on the left of your picture in the red, it's Claudio Imhoff on the right, Benjamin Thomas from France in the blue. And it's always a, a sort of slow motion start now in pursuiting, given the size of the gears these guys are riding. And Imhoff at the moment, quarter of a second to the good, but the first opening lap, there we go, neutralizes a little bit and still a tenth and a half up as the riders get tucked into that aero position. And uh, even that has changed dramatically in the last few years and start to get on top of these gears. And this really is an event that is, it's broken down into phases now, isn't it? Absolutely, and I think I think the start, although we, uh, you know, to the viewers at home and to us uh, commentating it, you know, it looks a little bit slow motion compared to the spinters, but that actually has uh, been, you know, one of the areas where these pursuiters have made up a lot of those times that we're now seeing, and uh, a lot of the team pursuiters uh, are doing training that would look like a spinters training maybe, a, a, you know, 10 years ago, something like that, because they need to get up to speed to find that time uh, to do these incredible times. So Benjamin Thomas turning the deficit around after the first lap, going into a kilo and a half. It looks like he's going to have a lead of about a second and a quarter. Claudio Imhoff got a lot of work to do if the home rider is going to deliver another bronze medal to the Swiss crowd. And at the moment, it's only going one way. 1.3 seconds now for Benjamin Thomas. Two very different riders. Thomas, quite a small, compact rider, able to tuck down behind those hands without the hands being that high up. Look at Claudio Imhoff, completely the opposite. Long, rangey rider, got a lot of extension in the hands to get those hands up in front of his face to make him nice and aero and here we go coming around two kilometers covered next time round and it looks like a lead of about a second and a half for Benjamin Thomas and this is where it starts to hurt 
Absolutely. These riders will be trying to keep keep as uh, consistent a pace as possible. That's probably been one of the other takeaways from the, the team pursuit in, in recent history, is that the most efficient way to complete this distance is to get up to pace and hold that pace as steady as possible for as long as possible. Got to say, both riders doing a fantastic job of keeping it low and on that black line. One thing, Callum, and I noticed this last night in the kilo, very surprised to see no, uh, I'll call them sandbags, they're not, they're foam pads, <laughs> but no sandbags here. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, and, and the rules have flip-flopped around when it comes to sandbags. Personally, I, I, I'm glad to see them go. I think if you if you get too low on the track, you've got a chance of, of your wheel actually slipping. We've seen that with Matthias Bushley in a, in a World Cup a couple of years ago, where he got onto the Cote d'Azur, was coming into the corner too fast, and lost his back wheel. So it's, you're, you're kind of in control of your own destiny when the sandbags aren't there, and you're not going to gain much of an advantage um, by going uh, as low as possible. Actually, seen one flick up on a front wheel as well and jam between the front wheel and, and the fork crown and the rider had a very nasty exit straight out the front of the bike so yeah they, they can be a bit of a pain and seen in team pursuit and in team sprinting as well if a rider in front hits one they can flick up to the rider behind as well but here we go coming up 750 meters to go it's come back you know it was a second and a half it's now seven tenths of a second is the home favorite Claudio Himov going to be able to turn this round he's finishing fast it's now down to half a second, 500 metres to go. He's brought it back down to 3.58 seconds. Sorry, 0.358 seconds. Benjamin Thomas here has got his work cut out. And look at this, Claudio Imhoff coming up to take the bell. It's down to less than a tenth of a second. And he's turned it around. He's now leading by a tenth of a second over Benjamin Thomas. The Swiss rider is going to deliver another medal. He's managed to turn round a second and a half deficit, finishing very fast indeed. And Claudio Imhoff with a 4.08.851 takes the medal by almost half a second over Benjamin Thomas. And Callum, what a fantastic turnaround that was. Yeah, fantastic illustration of why we love team pursuiting. And uh, it, was, it was great to see him off, uh, you know, keep his cool, hold his pace. He wasn't riding to uh, Benjamin Thomas' um, uh, strategy at all. Um, and it's had a tremendous uh, bronze medal for them there. There's not a lot of people in this Grenken Velodrome. It's pretty much a sellout, but having said that, there's only about 400 seats in here. We've lost some of those for TV camera positions and commentary positions, but they didn't half make some noise there when he turned that one round. An absolutely fantastic ride, and there you have confirmation. Claudio Imhoff with a 408.851 against Benjamin Thomas with a 409, and uh, it's just, <laughs> just worth saying that, that they were sort of fairly good team pursuit times when, when I was racing, which is a, a real sign of how things have changed over the years and how these uh, team pursuit and pursuit events especially have moved on with the aerodynamic gains and aerodynamic positions that we're seeing. <laughs> so the Swiss rightly very happy indeed with that. Imhoff takes the bronze medal to add to the, I think it was a silver that they got last night in the uh, team pursuit. As we move on to the final, Jonathan Milan of Italy against Lev Gonov from Russia. So the Italian, three seconds quicker in qualifying. And it really has been some summer for Italian track cycling. Italian cycling last weekend as well. And Callum, they are a nation that is massively stepping up. 
they really are, and they're such a kind of uh, nation that's entrenched in, in cycling history. So as as a as a fan, it's amazing to see. Of course, at Dallas, they'll see uh, British cycling on top when it comes to the team pursuit. Um, but they they've come out here, and they, they seem to be doing things their own way. They've got, you know, in classic Italian fashion, they've got these beautiful Pinarello bikes, plenty of flair, plenty of uh, passion, and it's and it's nice to see that win out in a sport that's become so sciency and, and kind of techy, I guess. Sciency. <laughs> Yeah, I, I still love the kind of art of cycling a little bit. I feel like uh, sometimes we can go a bit too much into the science. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, it, it, it's a sport at the end of the day, and, and very much like you know the criticism of Chris Froome looking down at his power meter and race radios and all that sort of thing. You do. You do do have this sense that you want it to be racing you don't want it to be a science experiment yeah i think i think i think most of the time we get the, the kind of balance point right um and it's with nations like italy stepping up that that make the difference with that so jonathan milan tucking down into that aero position surprised to see him adjusting quite often pushing himself back onto that saddle something we used to see alberto contador doing a quite a lot when he was on the road more so on the track you, you generally sort of set in that position you don't want to be moving around he was pushing himself back on that saddle a bit but tall rider got a nice aero position hands up in front of his face and at the moment 1.3 seconds i mean we're not going to get too excited because we did so in the uh, in the last uh, ride where we saw it get turned around but at the moment with the two kilometers gone it looks like uh, jonathan milan has this under control yeah, and the shifting position is a funny one, and that's something that a lot of riders struggle with. Uh, some of the more creative answers I've seen to that is people put uh, sticky back sandpaper on the edge of their saddle as if a race position wasn't uncomfortable enough. Yeah, and um, see Tony Martin about how that one works out for you. Yeah, maybe don't give that a Google. No, I wouldn't. Not unless you're uh, not at all squeamish. But uh, you can see there that graphic on the right-hand side of your picture. Jonathan Milan uh, pretty much yep, can see the back of Gonov from Russia when he comes round into the same straight. And uh, Gonov, he's doing a good ride, but you can see just not as quick as Milan. Jonathan Milan looking very good on the bike, and you can see the difference in the speed as he comes round into the home straight. So a kilometre to go this time when he passes the start finish line and the gap going out to almost four seconds yeah and gone off he will start to push the panic button or the coach might let him know that he he just needs to give it everything at this point it's not about pacing it's about trying to trying to get back on terms to milan and that can that's a very tough ask at this point yeah and if he's not careful that uh, that rabbit type uh carrot that you can see in front of him uh, you can see jonathan milan it could be catching gone off here I imagine there's no better feeling in the world in this event than when you see your opponent coming into view. Yep, so down the back straight, and there you go. And uh, there's no point in carrying on because at the end of the day, it's rider against rider. And Jonathan Milan knows that he is now the European Pursuit Champion for 2021. And uh, Marco Velo there has... Uh, he has taken this Italian team from strength to strength. They had Elio Viviani for so long, who was the standout rider. And now they've got such strength in depth. Ghana, Team Pursuit, uh, and this guy, Milan, now making his way onto the senior squad. And it's worth pointing out, Callum, those bars that they have on those Pinarellos, they really are something. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a, a favourite in the track centre. Um, whenever anyone brings out a new bit of kit, as I said, everyone's getting their cameras out or uh, giving it a little flick to see if there's uh, any interesting sounds coming out of it. But it's definitely one of the most beautiful bikes in the uh, in the track centre. So Jonathan Milan takes the men's individual pursuit title. Marco Vila, little tap on the head. And uh, Marco knows what this feels like. He's been world champion. He's been Olympic champion. And the young Milan, who set a very fast time in qualifying. We've seen some real raw emotion over the last couple of days with Fortan in the women's event and now Milan in the men's event. And it's great to see these European championships, which in the past have gone a little bit under the radar and been a sort of good Grand Prix event, now meaning so much to these riders. 
No, exactly. And I, I think it's it's maybe a, a kind of outpouring of emotion of, of what racing has been like for the last two years. I think, you know, uh, this is probably the first event um, to have a reasonable sized crowd inside it in, in quite some time. So I imagine it feels really different for these riders and something to cherish in the member. Yeah, and, and, you know, training's not been easy for these guys either, has it? You know, whereas before you were all sat around together having a laugh and a joke and that word banter, um, it just wasn't there. You had to do segregated training, training on your own. So Jonathan Milan at the top of the standings, Gonoff takes the silver and Imhoff takes the bronze medal. So a fantastic night of racing so far.